Hey, what's up, everybody? Llama here, and I've got some uh, Black Ops 2 TDM on the map Cargo, and I'm using the AN94 to start this game off, which is probably my favorite assault rifle in the game. And then my score streaks have a really dumb setup. I've got the UAV, the Guardian, because I think I was playing Domination, and then the Lightning Strike. So Guardian's pretty much useless in TDM, so I'm kind of going with two uh, score streaks here. I guess it's good for keeping the enemy team from um, camping one spot, which I think at one point, once I get them, I put them in that building in the uh, right side of the map so no one can camp that top roof there, or the uh, top little rooms there, because it's always annoying when people just want to sit in there with snipers all game. So, um, I made a video on the Xbox One yesterday, and I'm probably going to delete it because that video kind of sucked, but I was talking about the specs and stuff, and how about there might not be able to use, uh, use games in it and stuff like that. There's going to be some DMR, so... You use games will be linked to your account, and if you want to let a friend play it or something like that, then they're going to have to pay a fee to do it. So, um, here's an interview, which I'll link in the info. It's from GameSpot. It's a um, interview with Microsoft Game Studio VP Phil Spencer. So, here's um, what he says. Um, first off, is the console always connected? These are just going to be some of the reasons why the Xbox One, I think, is going to suck. And um, you can see he kind of tiptoes around the answers and doesn't... Um, give a straightforward answer of yes or no. Is it always going to have to be connected? And he said, well, we live in a world today, I'm just going to paraphrasing it because these are long-ass sentences, where your connection can go out at some time, so if you lose connection, you can still play your games, which means, yeah, you're probably most likely going to have to have an always-on connection because um, they said you have to be connected to live once every 24 hours. Maybe it'll be kind of like SimCity where you couldn't play the game at all if you are connected. I don't know. I never played SimCity, the new one, but I heard that was a uh, pile of crap for the first month and they couldn't get the servers going. <coughs> Um, I asked about used games, will the box support used games, and how is that model going to work? So here's his answer. So we'll talk about some some of how at a later date, but I will say that we understand the importance of the secondary market. The secondary market was important in the current generation. We designed Xbox One understanding secondary markets would be important in the new generation as well. We'll share more details, but people should know that is a design criteria for us on the new box. So he really didn't go into it at all. Um, what everyone was saying so far is um, if you get a game... First off, you have to install it to your hard drive, and these are going to be Blu-ray sized games, so they're going to be anywhere from 25 to 50 gigabytes, so you're not going to be able to put too many games on your hard drive, and it says in this interview you have to install them in order to play them or you can't play the game. And then you're like, they're linked to your Xbox Live account, so say you've got um, Mass Effect or something and you want to let a friend borrow it or he wants to let you borrow something, you can't play it unless you get his account or unless you want to probably pay a subscription fee. I'm talking about DRM, um, which is this copyright crap, and he tiptoes around that too. And then they asked, 500 gigabytes is a lot if every game has to be installed. And they're like, oh, our math says it's going to be pretty good. Um, do I get to bring my Xbox Live Arcade games with me? No, but your Xbox 360 will continue to support them. Um, I know they can't bring the 360 games because something with the architecture and the new chips, but you think they could do some cloud streaming for these little arcade games? I don't think Casual Crashers is that hard to stream. Um, all right, free-to-play games, no one cares. This is the one that's going to make me not buy this game. Uh, here's the question, Am, or not by the game, by the console. Am I right in saying the Xbox One will only work when the Kinect is attached to it? And the guy just says yes. So um, basically the new Kinect is kind of freaky. So it's only going to work if it's connected to it. Um, when you have it on, it's going to track your eye movement when you look away and stuff like that. It tracks your heartbeat and your pulse. I don't know if it tracks your pulse, but it can track your heartbeat and stuff like that. Um, so they were like, well, this is kind of freaky that they're doing, and it's a little spy-ish and some, like, Big Brother stuff. And they're like, oh, game developers can see when you look away so they can add better cutscenes and stuff. So, again, he's getting around that answer. But if this new Xbox, I really like the 360 a lot more than my PS3. I almost never play PS3 except for the show. But if this new Xbox requires you to have the Kinect camera on all the time, I am not going to buy it, and that's what it looks like. So looks like I will probably be getting the PS4 once I see more of that thing. Um... What else do we get here? Tracking an awful lot. Um, yeah, so here's what he said about Connect. The guy was like, it just tracks a lot of stuff. It tracks my heart rate, my attention when I'm looking at the screen. Um, and the answer from the Microsoft douche is we should be careful on how we characterize those features. Those are features that are available to game developers. You think about emotion or where your head's looking. These are tools that a game designer can use in develop developing a game and creating more immersion. The amount of capabilities in Connect has grown tremendously. But the data that it's collecting is really specific to the user experience that you're in, which I don't buy at all. I think they're going to use it to spy on people and stuff like that. Um, we're talking about sequels can be used good with Connect if they can uh, kind of track all your eye movements and stuff and see when something's dramatic. But they already know when something's dramatic. It's just like a movie. They put a dramatic scene in where they know people are going to like tear up and stuff. You don't need to track their eye movement to know that you can uh, play somebody's emotions and stuff like that with cutscenes. So 
I don't buy all that. Um, the PS4, I wish we got it to see it at their little press conference. I think E3's in the beginning of June. It's like three or four weeks away, which is a big um, video game expo where they're going to probably show off a bunch of the new Xbox games because right now they kind of only showed off the uh, cable box and features like that, Netflix and stuff, which, again, it's a game console first, so I don't really care if it can... It's cool that I can do TV double as a set-top box, but it's not what I would want to buy it. I would want to buy it for a game console, so... Um, They'll probably show off a lot more games and stuff like that at E3. I guess they showed off a Call of Ghost video, but I don't even watch it. I don't care. I'll probably <clears throat> probably buy that game, but it's going to be the same game as this one, only um, going to be set in a different time, and uh, <coughs> and it's going to, um, I don't know, just have a different storyline and stuff like that. All COD games are basically the same, just reskin, different guns, new maps, and just things like that. So, um, like I said, I'm probably still going to end up buying it, but people were mad at was using the same um, game engine. They're like, it's not going to run a new game engine. It's like, COD runs pretty smooth as it is, and on these new um, consoles with the new hardware, it's going to run a lot smoother. Oh, and then Ghost will come out um, a week before it does on the new Xbox, before any other console, so it'll come out on November 5th for the uh, Xbox One. Well, I guess the console will be out by then because they said it's going to come out on the new Xbox One before, so I'm guessing that's going to be the release date, and the game will come out the same day. And then um, come out like a week later on the 10th or 11th for every other system, PS4, 360, PS3, stuff like that. So that's my thoughts on it. Um, I want to see what the PS4's got lined up. Hopefully they'll show it off at E3, show off what it looks like and stuff like that, some of the features. Um, another thing, Xbox is HDMI only, which kind of annoys me because my capture card does component cables. And I would have to spend 200 bucks more on a new capture card. Unless I could get one of those little adapters maybe. But I would assume that those are going to be blocked somehow for... DMR and copyright infringement because uh, PS3 does that currently. You can't capture through HDMI with a uh, game recorder or like a game capture card. You have to use the component cables. So um, if they can have DMR in that, I expect them to in the new Xbox. But um, what's everyone think of it? Leave it in the comments. You're still going to get it or not. Like I said, I definitely want to see what the PS4 has to offer. I will. I'm leaning towards that now just because like oh, this always on connect and shit like that. It just looks a little retarded to me. So um, I just say, guys, um, I'll also link to the. Uh, article that I read and stuff like that will be in the info, so, uh, alright, bye. No, they're not, no. Oh, okay.